The phenomenon referred to as the back way is nothing new. However, the exponential increase in the number of young people who venture on this journey recently is a novelty. It has been dominating news outlets for all the wrong reasons and have been the focus of most researchers around the globe. Omar Maron, alias Folan, is among scores of young Gambians who, out of a desire for a better future, took the back way to Europe. He was also among the few who survived the treacherous journey. On behalf of all those who made it and those whose young lives were cut short, including the 62 Gambians that we have lost in just one incident in 2019, Omar leaves to narrate the terrible conditions they encountered on the way, including imprisonment, slavery, and kidnapping. But first, he tells us who he is. Uh, my name is Omar Marong, uh, commonly known as Folan. My friend called me Folan. Yeah. I am from Busumbala, originated Bush from, from Bush Town. I started my primary school at Sitanungu, uh, lower basic school. Yeah. Okay, I, pro I proceeded to Farafene Upper Basic. Mm -hmm. From there, I concluded in Model Senior Secondary School in Busumbala. Mm -hmm. After my graduation, I have attended an IT class first level. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, I came down here. Yeah. All right. So, Folan, we are going to make this quick, uh, but a few you. things we are going to discuss. One is what you were doing in the Gambia before you traveled, and then to tell us what your journey is and your transitioning while in Italy. Have you been working in the Gambia before? What sort of uh, work or engagement did you have in the Gambia when you were there? Thank you very much. After the graduation, you know, I I tried to join in the Gambia Immigration Service, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, during the selection, I was not selected. Mm -hmm. So from there, I joined a business with my brother. From there, we have sell the shop. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot of struggling. But we have sell the shop and he, he started going to Senegal and bring these women materials mm -hmm. and I go I do sell them for him. Yeah. So from there I convinced him to let me go for a back way. Yeah. So, so you you started with the business. Yeah, I started the with the business. Was successful. Yeah. And then successful. you decided you need to immigrate. Yeah. Through the back way. Through the back way. I, yeah. What specific reason pushed you to leave the Gambia through the back way to Italy? Not so many conditions pushed me to do so. Mm -hmm. But in the Gambia, for me to continue with that business, that business is not personal in my mind. You it understand? was your passion. Okay. Yes. I, I'm just helping my brother to continue with his business. Yeah. You understand? So I decided to go the back way because, like, as we all know in the Gambia at that time, every young man wanted to go to Europe. Yeah. So, likewise, me, I also want to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. So I told my brother to give me money to go because I don't have money personally that time. Yeah. So your conditions in the Gambia weren't so there. It wasn't such a bad condition. You just decided no. to travel because it was the trend to travel to Europe. Can you explain yeah. us your that's preparation? My, that's, I, can, I can say that's my ambition since I'm young. For In real, like every time your ambition is like to leave the country and like, at least you go to Europe and try to earn a living. Yeah. Because we all feel that that's the that's in Europe we have a better condition than Gambia. We all think that. Yeah. Even, even though later, later you realize that, you know, homeland is the best, but <laughs> Before then, you, you, you I mean, never think that. that. That's true. So can you briefly explain to us what preparations you did while in the Gambia to move? I told my brother to give me money for to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it wasn't so easy for him to do so because that time I'm the brain of his business. Mm -hmm. So he did, not, he did not want to let me go. Okay. So one day I was there, you know, frustrated. I, I wanted to travel. Every time I disturb his wife that, you know, tell your husband to give her. I, I used, I normally used to tell him that you mm -hmm. have to invest on me. 
because you are a businessman to invest on me. So he used to laugh. But later I realized that this man mm -hmm. don't want me to travel because of his business. One day I decided to park all the all the records mm -hmm. and give it to him. I tell him that I, I, I'm no more interested with your business. Hence, you don't want to help me mm -hmm. to travel. I'm no more interested with your business. So you can go ahead. Your, your, your wife is a student like me. Yeah. You can give your wife and help you to record everything for you. Mm -hmm. That he didn't like. Honestly, my brother, I can I thank him for that. He loved me so much. So he respected that opinion and let me be. So yeah. one of my one of my my elder, somebody at the area there, mm -hmm. he's a very good close elder friend with friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a van driver. Mm -hmm. So I, I I went to his home. I tell him that uh, Monday for me. Now I leave business, so I want to join your boss. Mm -hmm. So he laughed because he never think of that. Mm -hmm. So, but I did it for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because to I myself, uh, no, not to earn money, but because I know that my brother will not like me to do that. Because okay. at least I did not, I did not have a very good background of education. But he knows that, mm -hmm. you know, my future is not depend on that. You understand? So yeah. I know that my brother will not like me to continue with that yeah so i decided i planned that for myself so i went to that man i told him that i told him that i want to join you, you. Played your brother <laughs> yes so that man also did not even want to do so but i convinced him mm -hmm. so he told me okay tomorrow i'm not working but i will go i will take you for i will take you like two trips maybe i see whether you can do the job yeah. So that's what he did. The following day, he calls me. We, uh, you know, we go work together like two trip. So he's very, very convinced to work with me because he tell me that he, you know, I'm a very honest somebody. You know, later, mm -hmm. I work with that man for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So my brother is not comfortable with it because for days mm -hmm. he will not see me. Okay. Like I would go, I would go early in the morning and come back home like, like 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. So one one day he calls me at his, in his house mm -hmm. and tell me that now I have finally booked your your ticket everything mm -hmm. you will leave. So I'm very very happy that very day, you know, because yeah. I I used to tell him that That's this bag my my belief this bag way then mm -hmm. my belief even like people are dying in, on this journey, you know. For, for me right, right that time I did not even believe in that much. Yeah. I used to tell him this journey is like, you know, using a flight and using a back way is all the same. <laughs> that yeah. time I used to tell him. As long as so you get that, your destination. Thank you very much. From that very day, mm -hmm. I think that I have my ticket to Europe. Mm -hmm. So I'm very so he started the process. Mm -hmm. He gave me some money mm -hmm. to prepare myself. Mm -hmm. And he also went and king like seven thousand dollars for Sefa. Mm -hmm. So and, this is how yeah. he bought the ticket. Yeah. Do you remember the day you left, like the date? Uh thank you very much. That date I will never forget that in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That date I will never forget it in my life because there is an occasion in my home that very day because my uncle have married newly mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's the day his wife is coming home. And that was the day you left. Which date was that? Uh, this was on the 19th of uh, December, on the 19th of December, 2015. 2015. 2015. Yeah, so it's almost six years since you've been in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Six years now. Yeah. So describe the journey for us from Gambia to Italy. You, how has the journey been? Um, what routes did you take? Which countries did you find yourself in? And how long have you stayed in those countries before you eventually reach your final destination? My journey to like from Gambia to Libya, the capital city like Tripoli is not like, it's like two weeks, uh, four days. I, I spent two weeks, four days like this. Two weeks, four days, two weeks, five days. I can't remember actually. In a but bus? Not only in a bus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I change vehicles. Okay. Yeah, my journey from Gambia to Tripoli is very fast. Uh, you know, I do not spend much time in on the way because 
uh, for you to spend more time on the way if your backup is not very much strong you will spend more time on the way, on your way coming mm-hmm. but for mine it, it is already set up mm-hmm. if i take my bus in banjun mm-hmm. yeah from banjun i went to senegal mm-hmm. so we spent like like a night to enter in senegal mm-hmm. so the following day because i i depart in banjun at seven o'clock mm-hmm. in the evening so we spend the night at the border the gambian border entering senegal mm-hmm. so from there when the border was open we, we, we proceeded in senegal so we spent one day to enter in mali mm-hmm. like that throughout that day we run to enter in mali so we reach at mali like the following morning mm-hmm. so we reach in, in mali we depart from mali to uh, Burkina Faso, mm-hmm. but on the way it was like very terrible because the security like in that uh, stops is very terrible because they, they, they request a lot of money from people, mm-hmm. you understand? For me, I did not face so many difficulty, but later I get angry at the end of the journey. I get angry because I, I spend a lot of money. I later realized that all this money I spend is like too much. Yeah. So, but some well, people necessary. among the friends, some people they have less money. They don't have enough pocket money, and some of them they have no sponsor. They are doing everything by themselves. Some of them is they carry all the money. Mm-hmm. They decided to go to Europe. They are having all that money on that way. And if those people, if those people, you know, they send you back, uh, out from the bus, they mm-hmm. will tell you to make a queue. So you will come, you submit, they will collect all your documents. Mm-hmm. Immediately from the bus, they will collect the documents one after the order until the bus is empty. Mm-hmm. This is the strategy they will use. Now, for you to enter in the bus, you have to pay something to collect your document and enter this is the strategy they used to use on us mm-hmm. so we will all submit our do- documents we all set, uh, descend our, uh, out of the bus and they will collect money they will sometimes they will say uh, day mil franc <laughs> that time i did not know those what that means. <laughs> i will i will i will even tell people that look at this uh, this is a blue one you know i used to call safer like a blue one a red one the mm-hmm. one having ten thousand <laughs> I would used to I used to ask my friends like the one having ten thousand, the one having five thousand, the mm-hmm. one having two thousand like this. I understand the seva like that. Yeah. So these people, if they know that they know that the Gambians did not understand the seva, mm-hmm. and they know that the the boys from the Gambia they always have plenty of money with them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they will even ask, where are the Senegalese park beside? Where are the Malians park beside? They will separate us like that so they will start collecting from those people first mm-hmm. they let her come for us because they will charge us money that we will, we will pay they know that we have it and we don't know the value mm-hmm. so we pay like that we reach at one stop like uh, in Burkina Faso they mm-hmm. call their uh, what is the name again father or something like that father that is a it's a it's a stop it's mm-hmm. a police checkpoint yeah that place terrible also because that is the last checkpoint mm-hmm. to enter in Niger. That place, if you ask any, <laughs> if you ask anybody use that this way, mm-hmm. knows that place because they don't request for small. They would request like Vang Mil Fra, that is I think 20,000 like, yeah. <laughs> I used to call them like that, 20,000 Sefa, okay. like 2D mil, something like that. So mm-hmm. they would request that. That was that place was very tough. Okay. So we are there. They put they they they, they put us in 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 a cell. Mm-hmm. So they came with a very very in, long in cable. Burkina Faso. They tell us that in Burkina Faso, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the the place the name I know for that place is like Fada, something okay. like that. Yeah. Fada. Okay. So that place they will put everybody in the cell. So, and threaten you. Mm-hmm. You people wanted to go to Bagway, yeah. mm-hmm. and we have like a pickup here, a brand new pickup given to us, like with, with your uh, given to us by your president, Yaya Jame. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So you people have to pay us what we demand, or mm-hmm. else we take you back mm-hmm. with a with a serious beating. Mm-hmm. So you know, all of us want to go to Europe. Nobody want to go back, and the little you have, you have to give it up. For me, my brother gave me enough money to go to this way. So these people will not stop me here. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to waste my time here. I will pay and leave. This is what I did. I I pay, and I get out. So mm-hmm. from there, we take the bus to another checkpoint that is the beginning of Niger that checkpoint also like it's like these two checkpoints maybe they know each other I don't know but maybe mm-hmm. because this the same way they operate these are yeah. the two checkpoints almost the network yeah these are the two dangerous checkpoints in on this way mm-hmm. everybody knows about them so that place name called uh Kanchare okay they call it they call it Kanchare so that place to arrive at that place by then i'm going out of money okay yeah because we we used to hide our money in different locations of our body mm-hmm. you understand so i checked my body i did not see i didn't found nothing so they asked us that you people have to pay like twenty thousand safer that is a uh, very mil franc mm-hmm. So we were there like two hours sitting in a big room like this. They are going up and down, talking to each other. All of us are, we are, we are very, very uncomfortable in that house. Yeah. So they tell us that after from here, if you pay here, you are not going to pay anywhere until you reach at Nyame. Mm-hmm. So some of our people at, 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 uh, at Fada, those people decided even to leave the bus and take these uh, motorbikes those mm-hmm. motorbikes will take you to Bagway. I did not use that way. That's why I cannot talk much about that. Mm-hmm. So I decided to use the bus because I told my friends that this is the bus that took me from Mali. So this is the bus I'm going to reach at Anyame. So we proceeded with that bus so mm-hmm. to the capital of Niger, Nyame. Mm-hmm. So I arrived I arrive in that capital like uh, 2 o'clock at night. That very day we sleep like, like I would say that in Mandenga the Madala, you know, <laughs> yeah. we, we spend the night there. So from the from the following day, mm-hmm. my agent called. I told him that this very day I will come to Agadez. He told me no, this is not what I discussed with your brother. I have I have an agent in in Nyam. He told me that you have to go and stay with uh, that agent. I don't want to name names. Mm-hmm. So that boy called uh, come to pick me up so i pro- i went with that agent of mine saturday night mm-hmm. we take off with the bus to nyame yeah uh, no agades all right so now let's, agades. let's talk about what happened in agades like in agades for me i don't i don't spend a day in agades because i reached in agades at mm-hmm. night like 11 o'clock 12 o'clock at night mm-hmm. we spend the night we i spend the night there mm-hmm. The following day, the pickups take off. Mm-hmm. So we we take that pickup five o'clock in the evening. Mm-hmm. Hit the desert. So in the desert, I spent three days in the desert. Mm-hmm. Okay, because for me we don't have much stops in the desert like mm-hmm. other people. Some people like their water will be finished, their fuel will be finished, and they will spend so many time in the desert. For me. Mm-hmm. I'm very lucky that what that did not happen to me. Mm-hmm. So I arrive in the first first village of Libya called Tijere. Mm-hmm. We spent one day there. We proceeded to buy buy uh, Bahe. So the agent at Bahe took mm-hmm. us in Bahe. I spent one day in Bahe. So that we spent the night there. The following day we took off to. Uh, Saba. Okay, I spent. I did not even sleep in Saba. I entered in Saba that very day. We took off mm-hmm. five uh, around seven o'clock. So from Saba to Benwalid. So Saba to Benwalid, we spent like two days mm-hmm. because we stopped at a place that I I did not uh, remember the name. So from there we spent the night there and we took off to Benwalid. So in Benwalid, that's where I spent three days. In that place, like it's like a big fence, like this one door. 
with a small shop which you cannot even have any you know all the things you need no toilet around nowhere to peace it's like that what that place is it's not terrible because that place just is, is just created for this the people who are traveling they will come and have a stop here so that's the place your agent will pay the, that you libyan see. agent the arab man mm-hmm. the money to tripoli so in that place they have two big room the other one is like it's a, it's a, it's a prison i can call it or a kidnapping room because if you don't pay they will put you in that in that room so you can spend any amount of debt there they don't because these arab people they are, they don't have sympathy for a black so for me we were there like three days so they came with a a, a mini truck mm-hmm. they park us in that truck like more than more than 50 or more than that they park us they park us there at night the parallel ballet i had the amura mulkan yeah you want to say big blanket so we they took us to one place i i don't remember the name again so we reached at that place at five o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. they bring this small vehicle like 190 these small vehicles mm-hmm. they will up they, they will open the the, the the boot of the vehicle and put five or six people mm-hmm. in the boot. <laughs> that place was so terrible and this was the journey to libya this is the journey to that is the last mm-hmm. place last point to mm-hmm. enter in tripoli okay oh. you cannot blame them much for putting you in the boat because because of why mm-hmm. we are doing an illegal migration mm-hmm. and that time there are people there are police and other service man in libya we mm-hmm. did not want this migration to take place there mm-hmm. they can even fire at you okay you understand so they, for them also the ones doing this uh, uh this thing trafficking mm-hmm. those people also are taking risks Mm-hmm. So they have to do what they do. They will put you in the boot, or they put you inside the inside at the back of the like the, the small the small car, and they will tell you to get down. You will never see outside. From mm-hmm. okay, I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit lucky because I'm the first person he put inside. Mm-hmm. Later those people have to come on Join. top of me. Mm-hmm. But because because I'm a I'm I'm, a, I'm somebody who is a bit tall. Mm-hmm. So he tell me to come out because I'm very tall. They, these people cannot come on me because the place is too small. Yeah. So I have to come out. Those people have to go down and I come on top of them. Mm-hmm. We have like an hour plus mm-hmm. in that vehicle. So we don't even know where we are going. So the terrible part of it is like we reach in Tripoli. We don't know the, the, the city. Mm-hmm. We don't know the, it's the capital of uh, Libya. We don't know the city. We have never been there. This is the first time. So they stop at a point. They they all stop. All the vehicles stop. They ask us to come back, come down. Mm-hmm. So they give us a, a small phone. Like you have to call your agent. It was five o'clock, mm-hmm. you know, in the morning. We call our agent. He did not pick call. He, we call again and he did not pick. So they just left us there and leave. Um, so mm-hmm. that is there is yeah they, they leave so there is one uncompleted building mm-hmm. i suggested among us i suggested that but why not we enter here and wait like maybe eight o'clock nine mm-hmm. eight nine because right now it's dark when they see us mm-hmm. they will think that we are criminal the way we look because mm-hmm. we are very dirty and we are very very disorganized if mm-hmm. you see us you will know that these people are just arriving there is one uh one man having a like this freezer car like this freezer car you know carrying fish and all that mm-hmm. he's the one who called us where are you people he shows us and knows that these people are just arriving mm-hmm. he said where are you people are going we said we want to go to grigaras mm-hmm. so but that grigaras is a point where most of these illegal migrants got it. Got mm-hmm. us, yeah we all that's that's where they have residence and all that Mm-hmm. So the name, the name that Grigaras, mm-hmm. if even the police had that or any, you know, Libyan had it, they, they, they all know what that means. Yeah. That time we cannot even speak Arab, we cannot speak nothing. 
Mm-hmm. He try he, he tries so much to explain us that if the police see you, you people are going to prison. Mm-hmm. So what we can even understand that the time he did like this, mm-hmm. that's the time we understand that this man is talking about police. So we also tell him that come like, do you have phone? Because Libyans they don't speak English, but they like English, and if you speak English to them with an act with an action, they little bit understand. Mm-hmm. So he told us yes, and he bring out his phone. So there is a boy among us who, who's I don't know cousin or uncle I don't know. That's the man he called. Mm-hmm. So that boy called that man, and we explain our situation to the man. Mm-hmm. So he told us that no problem because he's, he the man also is an agent. Mm-hmm. Now you can put my link. We are in that foyer. Mm-hmm. Like I we spend one week. One two weeks, two weeks there. I cannot two weeks there. Yeah, mm-hmm. we spent two weeks there. Later, the that fire was attacked mm-hmm. by the by the military military men personnel. Mm-hmm. So they take all of us out and they took us to prison. I spent three months in the prison. Three whole months. In Libya, you go to prison. Yeah, <laughs> in Libya, you go to prison without <laughs> doing nothing. That yeah. that happened in. Libya. Yeah. So they took, yeah, the first prison they took us to, they said that place is full at night. Mm-hmm. So they took us to that prison, they said that place is full, they took us to another prison. That place called, the first prison I attended called uh, Abu Slin. Mm-hmm. Abu Slin is like, that place is a legal prison because why, why I say it's a legal prison, it's a legal Im- migrant prison. Because there, everything is sponsored by UN. Okay. In that place, you will take bath, you will do everything. They will give you a towel, they will give you a toothpaste, they will give you a like, you know, a brand new mattress. Let's talk about how you left the prison. How long? You said you stayed in the prison for three months. Now let's yeah. talk about how you left the prison and how you left uh, Libya eventually to to Italy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, the first prison, the first prison called. Uh, uh, Abu Slim, I spent one month there. Mm-hmm. I spent one month in that prison. That prison, you don't pay money to leave. Mm-hmm. There is no parnamis. We are there. We don't even know what to do. Mm-hmm. For you to go walk is very difficult. Even to take you outside is very difficult. So we sp- I spent one month there. Mm-hmm. They later transferred us to another prison. That mm-hmm. prison is, you know, out of Tripoli because it's it's like Banyun to Base. Okay. They transferred us to the, uh, that prison. That prison called uh, uh, what is the name again? Uh, Homos. So they transferred us to Homos. That's the place. Like we have access to go to work. We have access on with phones to call our parents to to negotiate for a Barnabas. Mm-hmm. So for me to cut it short, we spent I spent two months there. Mm-hmm. So one day there's a one. Libyan man came there to to look for a worker. So me and one Brigama boy mm-hmm. go for work, you know, work for him. So he told us that I would like you people to dig a very big hole for me, like a foundation, mm-hmm. a building foundation, more than 300, you know, meters. Mm-hmm. So he told us that if you people finish like three days, I will take you direct to Tripoli. Mm-hmm. Because that time we are out of Tripoli. So he said, if you finish that, I will take you directly. You are going to be free. Mm-hmm. So we try, like me and that boy, we will work from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening. Mm-hmm. Because we want to finish that. We want to leave that place. Mm-hmm. So we did that two days. He knows that this the following day we are going to finish it. He want to change his mind. So we also fool him, like we are going to pay you now for you to take us out. He mm-hmm. agreed. So he took us to his farm. So mm-hmm. we are there, and one, you know, one uh, agent, because that that time I that boy spent more than three months in the prison. Mm-hmm. So his people gave money to one agent to look uh, find him. So mm-hmm. he contacted that agent. So the, I also contacted him for like uh, my brother would give me money and for you to help me go uh, get out here. Mm-hmm. So, but for our negotiation with that man. So mm-hmm. that boy decided to pay his money. Like I will, I will pay pay you money, and you take me to uh, 
Tripoli. So for me, that time I'm the one who used to speak for that boy because I can try to speak Arab at that time a little bit. So I tell him that for me, we have made an agreement. I was even angry and he realized that I'm very, very angry with him. We have made an agreement, we work for you and you tell us that you are going to take us to Tripoli and this is what you are saying again. Mm-hmm. So he said, no, I did not agree with you. We, you know, I tell him, okay, now this boy want to go to Tripoli. For me, I want to, I, I don't want to go. He said, you want to spend the rest of your life in, in, in prison like this? I said, yes. So he took that boy to Tripoli mm-hmm. and he and his friends. So mm-hmm. before he came back, he left me there with his grandfather. Mm-hmm. So I decided to, es- I, I managed to escape from mm-hmm. the grandfather there. Mm-hmm. Because the grandfather did not understand much about like these workers coming here, they are prisoners. Yeah. So I, I escaped from there. So from there I escaped, I went to, I called my, my agent. That mm-hmm. time my brother sent some money to an agent. Yeah. So I called that agent. I tell him that I'm, I was escaped. So how, how am I going to manage to come to Tripoli? He tell me that, like, look for a, a taxi. Mm-hmm. So I said, before I look for a taxi, let me look for a place to, you know, hide for a little bit, like one day. So I went to one Nigerian boys there. They 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 are working there. Mm-hmm. So I explained the situation to them, and they accord, accommodate me for like a night. So the following day, I pay a taxi to Tripoli. Mm-hmm. So I spent like three three weeks, no, two weeks. Tripoli. My brother have already paid my boss, eh, my my this thing, my boat mm-hmm. to depart in in Italy. Yeah. To depart to Italy. Yeah. So and from there, in Italy, when? I arrived in Italy like twenty fourth. 24th of May, mm-hmm. 2016. Wow, almost half a, half a year, almost six months. Yeah. Almost six months, yeah. It was exactly six months. Because yeah. he left Gambia in December and arrived in Italy yeah. on, on, on the 28th of May. This yeah. is a colorful story and it's almost got me emotional. Yeah. I know that, yeah, it, it, your kind of story is very tragic for some people, but luckily you made it to Italy and yeah. here you are. When you arrive in Italy, this would be your first day in Europe. Yeah, for real. Anywhere that looks like, I don't know, how did it look? <laughs> what was your impression? When you first arrived in Italy, what were you thinking? What was the impression? Nima, for us, like, even before arriving in Italy, mm-hmm. you know, the very day we took off in Libya, mm-hmm. that very day the, the 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 sea is very 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 disorganized. You know, it's very very the the weather is very bad. Mm-hmm. So we managed to hit on that dangerous weather. Mm-hmm. It was a terrible night. So when we because our our boat is already spoiled, for me. Mm-hmm. I'm even. I'm not even thinking about next day. You thought you were going to die. Yes. For me, I'm not thinking about. I'm not. For me, I'm not even afraid anymore. Mm-hmm. Because it's just like I'm seeing something coming. Mm-hmm. It's not like I. I'm not thinking about the next day. I you were preparing to die. You thought. Yes. Instead. Yes. Because that time, you know. Around two o'clock at night, you are in the real, you are in a big ocean. Mm-hmm. Boat is destroyed, and you have to like run for like until eight o'clock in the morning before you see the rescue boat. Mm-hmm. That one, I'm not even thinking about. Like today, I will be sitting here talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> I never think of that. So in yeah. the morning, like in the morning around nine o'clock, we see the rescue boat. Yeah. So how so long when, did it take? How long did it take to ferry from? Libya to Italy. Okay, for us, we depart around 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. So we reach, we see the rescue boat around 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. In the morning. Yes. Because that time I don't have a watch, but yeah. I, I think around 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So when we see the rescue boat, mm-hmm. for us standing in front of the boat, one boy there said, there's a rescue boat there. 
we all said no this is not a rescue boat because if people heard that we, there's a rescue boat that is most of the time Mm-hmm. This this is the problem. This this is these are the time of those you know incidents like incidents, yeah. we, yes, that's the problem. It's so problem. we said no. This is this is not the rescue boat. We are trying to calm people because everybody wants to stand up because mm-hmm. people are tired. Mm-hmm. You know, like we are 60, 60, 63 people in our boat. Mm-hmm. A small boat. It's very very congested. <laughs> so they they pick us there. The time we are in the rescue boat. Mm-hmm. That time, like I say, Alhamdulillah, mm-hmm. we have arrived in Italy because those people are telling us that welcome to Italy, welcome to Italy, welcome to Italy. Mm-hmm. We are like the last person to leave the port because there are some women in our boat and uh, like a baby. Mm-hmm. So we managed to help them because like we are the people in front. So those people see that like these people are big boys, so they can help people to climb up the rescue boat. So we help. And we are the last person to climb up to the rescue boat. The time I climb on the rescue boat, mm-hmm. I did not reach an Italy, but I feel that I'm in Italy now. So I thank God. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'm thinking is like to reach at Italy to like to have a mobile phone to call the family that I'm here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So you you arrive in Italy. How did you feel? Yeah, we spent like like. Half a half half a day, mm-hmm. we reach at Italy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we say Alhamdulillah because this is what we pray for. Mm-hmm. You know, to come to this country. Mm-hmm. So everybody knows what is your plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Either you will stay in Italy or you will go to Germany. But for me, the time I'm coming, I'm even thinking of going to Germany. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but as the situation is like. You want to go to Europe, so you reach at Europe now. There's no nothing like his. You are used not being his. You have to take your time and you gather your documents together. Yeah. And at least if you have a work, you work because it's all like it's all Euro. They yeah. all use Euro, and we are here for money. So mm-hmm. this is it. I'm very very happy. Mm-hmm. So I enter in Europe like my first my first camp was in Roma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my first camp was in Roma. Mm-hmm. So I spent one week in Roma and they transferred us. Okay. Yeah, so they transferred us to this city. Mm-hmm. That's the city I'm, I'm, I'm resident right now. What city is this? Fermo. Fermo, okay. Fermo in the region of Marque. Yeah. All right, Omar, this was a colorful, colorful story. Uh, and I'm so happy it has a, a happy ending. Uh, you are here today and you can be a great inspiration to a lot of other young boys out there. Um, now that it's been six years, yeah. if the opportunity present, if say for example, there is a reverse back to your earlier life before you came to Italy, if the choice is presented to you, would you have taken the same route? Would you make the same decision? <laughs> you no, you might, everybody will tell you now. Mm-hmm. Because for me, I never heard it. I never see it. Mm-hmm. I never like even had a discussion that there is somebody who came to Italy, enter in Italy through back way, like he eventually like they deported him and he came back to this journey. I never, I, I don't know whether it happens. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So in that case, <laughs> for me, I didn't, I did not even encourage my younger brothers to, to do take it. up this journey. So right now I'm in I'm in push and pull with my younger brother. <laughs> he's 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 very upset with me that uh, you know he want to come to back with this and this and that. Yeah. So but I did not agree. Mm-hmm. So I'm planning to go to Gambia. So mm-hmm. if I go there, maybe we'll sit and discuss about it and I will that's the time maybe I will have an opportunity to tell him everything why I do not want him to go. Yeah. Maybe if he understands, because right now we are not in good time. He he is not understanding anything. I even stopped communicating with him because of that. I know. I can imagine that. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with me. I am so grateful. Thank you. Um, I will say thank you so much for your time and for the thank story. You very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome.